Well, hello and welcome to Fish of Fun Friday. My name is Marianne Oakes. I work at Regents Hospital in St. Paul, Minnesota, and I am the complex abdomen specialist there. I have a passion for fistulas and for complex wounds. And I work with an amazing team of wound nurses that I will be working with today on the video that you'll be seeing. And so if you like this kind of step-by-step -step how we do it kind of thing, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, or if you would like, you can go to complexwounds.com. And if you want to send me a message, or if you have better ways of doing things, I would love to have you on the show. So lots of different options. So today we're going to talk about uh, pressure injuries or your found down patient and how our wound care team takes care of these patients and then how to get that great seal on a patient where the, all their wounds are in the backside and close to some of the other structures. We're going to talk about negative pressure wound therapy with installation of VOSH in a pressure injury. So this case is a pressure injury from a lady that was found down for an unknown amount of time. She was in her recliner. Unfortunately, she was incontinent and she was in septic shock when she came to us. She had traumatic rhabdo and she had a history of diabetes, uh, hypertension, and some mental health issues as well. The emergency department actually took pictures, which is amazing. So then the wound nurses actually knew what they were walking into. And you can see she's had, she has a lot of pressure injuries. She's got some deep tissue injuries, just a lot going on all in the worst places ever. The team put her into moist wound healing with gauze and hypochlorous acid solution, Bosch. She had a lot of stooling. So that was kind of um, a lot of difficulty for the teams because they had to do frequent dressing changes. By the third 13th, she looked pretty good. They got a fecal management system in place. But if you are watching this and you have a method to make sure that these fecal management systems don't leak, you have to call me or email me or whatever, because it seems like about one in five of these, it goes through the fecal management system too, but a lot of times it'll leak around it which is really hard, especially if you're trying to stick a back down in that area because people keep kind of wiping it off. So uh, let me know. On August 2nd, the team decided to put her into negative pressure, preparing her for partial closures or skin grafting, whatever the surgical team thought that they could do. So they have to have two different negative pressure wound therapy units. So the back ulta units, because you only get one installation per back pump. And obviously she had two wounds. So we needed to make sure that we had installation for each one of the wounds. Both of them, they decided on 26 milliliters of Vosh solution, a five minute soak every two hours, negative 125. And then they bridged them to the lateral sides. Some of the secret sauce is Cavalon Advanced is the new product from 3M. And it is kind of a crossover between like Dermabond and the skin protectant. That's how I see it. And you can put it on bleeding skin, allow it to dry, which takes about a minute. It gives you a nice surface to land your back on. And then I love these Hollister 7806 rings. They're the four inch flats and they go pretty far. Once you cut them like a spiral, you'll see the nurses are going to do that in the video around the edges. And then I have an affinity for this particular scissor. <laughs> Some of the technique tips that we're going to talk about today is making sure that you get that hydrocolloid into these little nooks and crannies, because that's really how you get that leak proof back. Sometimes we'll preload the strips that we're going to put around the edges, especially in the, in the OR where we have a lot of hands. Here's just an example of that. The taco technique is making sure that you get this little piece of hydrocolloid firmly against this little divot. And there can't even be the smallest amount of hammocking because then you will definitely have fluids slip underneath here and you'll have a leak. Once you get the hydrocolloid all the way down and I do it just like this little taco and I touch it down, then put the drape down. And remember, you can't pull the drape in different directions. You have to let it settle naturally and then let it flop out. The other thing you can do is preload your hydrocolloid and do the same thing where you're pushing it all the way down to the bottom. If this starts to hammock a little bit, you can kind of see it doing that right here. I would clip this and then I would put a piece of drape rectangular on the opposite direction, just to make sure I have that seal, that contact seal. Okay, so here's a video. I'm gonna taco this piece in because it absolutely has to touch flat. Then they're really working together on the same wound so they can get that barrier all the way down. You can see right here, she was making sure that that barrier sat all the way down into that crevice and there was no gapping whatsoever. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, that should be fine. Yeah. Mm. No, I like that there. Because you're going to instill here a negative pressure of cap down. Now, if you cut this right here, yes. yeah, just right down the middle, it'll bend a little bit easier. Like to slice it? Yes. I'm going to clip this right here and let's get it. So you really want the foam to be on the inside of the wound and not on top of that berry ring. And so they clipped it free and retaped it just for that reason. They're completing their dressing. They have it all nice and secured in there. They're going to put the installation port directly on the wound because then it doesn't take as much to get the fluid to the wound, which is the ultimate goal in installation therapy, protecting the skin. Then you're going to run your installation tubing down your bridge. And then we put the negative pressure on the far side. We cover it with the Mepilex dressing. And then the second wound, they're doing the same thing. We're making sure we get all the way around the edges, putting the foam in here. And then we're going to put our negative pressure system way over to the far side. Now, I'll hold it up. I'm trying to get you guys on the ground. Okay. You have like a whole like tour though. All right. So you get the track pad placed over here. Eight days later, we took her to the operating room. We did partial closures on all her wounds. I put a big negative pressure system, customizable Provena, it's called, on all the incisions. And because I wanted it to talk to itself and only have one tube because she moved around a lot, I just had it connect up and over the top of the lower back. And then she did have some drains placed, so I had to make sure that they were protected as well. So once we were done, obviously I turned it around so you could read the writing, but that Provena is here, the negative pressure for the vac is coming out here. I'm protecting it, offloading it with a Mepilex border dressing. And then the drain, I'm doing the same thing over here. So if she does lay on her sides, she won't have any device related injuries. So the learning points, you really need another person to make sure that you can gently flatten out or make the skin as flat as possible so that you can use that te taco technique and get the barrier ring all the way where you want it to be without hammocking. Positioning patients is super important. I don't know if you could tell, but she, this lady was so wonderful. She actually turned all the way onto her belly so that we could do work. And I think that that's something we don't think about as much as wound care nurses. In the operating room, believe me, we take a ton of time to get our patients in the perfect position so that the surgeon can do their work without having bad body mechanics. And I think we got to think about that more for wound care because I'm sure we've all been in that situation where someone's holding a leg and then they start to get tired and they put it down and you're still trying to get your hydrocolloid on. Now it's all stuck to itself. Position your patient as best you can to get to the wound that you are trying to work on. And then teamwork makes the dream work. I mean, I work with a group of amazing wound care nurses and every single day we have so much fun together and wound care should be fun. I think that it helps the patient when everybody is having fun and talking to them. I mean, we have people that even sing when we're doing wound care. I would just like to say thank you so much for watching. I hope this video will help you in your practice. I think that as wound care people, we have to be super creative and we definitely need to talk to one another. We need a tribe so that like, if I have something that I feel like is works really well, like what you saw with the, the wound care nurses we're doing, you know, to really share that. So if you have any questions or if you have anything to share, you can always email me through the complexwounds.com website. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful fistula Friday. And though we had no fistula talk today, just saying Fishula Friday brings me joy. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.